Happy New Year! This is Nicole McGuark and this is the start of the 2012 From Start to Finish series. This is the layout that I'm going to share with you today and I'm going to start by telling you my intro where I'm sharing the products is a little bit long today and I apologize for that. I will try to speed that up in the future. I was a little bit talky. Um, so I'll try not to do that so much anymore. Also, I'm planning on implementing sharing me actually showing you the product and stuff kind of like I used to do in some other videos, but I have a red eye today and I didn't want to expose you to that. Okay, my products this week. Um, first of all, I have these photos. This is a very old one that I actually had a print made or a copy made from the original photo, so the quality is not the best, but this is a photo of me when I was a baby, and my mom had taken these pictures of my oldest son when she babysat him, and he was doing the same, or a similar thing to what I had done when I was a baby, and my mom had thought these were so cool, and so the whole story is what I'm basing my layout on today. And I've kept these forever, and I actually had scrapbooked them a long time ago, and I really didn't like the scrapbook page. So I didn't have it in a book anywhere, and that was kind of sad, because the story is cool. It is cool that my mom captured these moments like 25 years apart, and I think that that's really neat that my mom took both of these photos. And so I really like the idea of putting these on a page together. And I already have my journaling from my old page and everything, so I'm going to put it together on this page. So I'm first gonna go through my product picks. I know you guys like this when I did this at two peas, and so um, for the most part, I guess I should say. And so I'm gonna go ahead and um, go through what I'm going to be using really quick and I did choose a lot of papers that kind of had a more vintage feel to them I think. So first I have this farmhouse collection paper from Crate Paper. This is the homemade. You can see bright colors here on the back. The reason I went and grabbed this, you can see it's just a scrap. I've used a little bit of it before. It has a slight pattern. I don't know if it, that shows up really well or not. But it has a slight pattern, but I need something that I can type my, or print my journaling on. And I should probably go ahead and share here. I did sketch out a little design of how I think my page is going to work, and so I'm planning on having my journaling right here in this middle section. So that is how come I picked this. I thought it coordinated nicely with the farmhouse collection from October afternoon. And what I have here is this gray stripe, gray and cream stripe. Here's the back side, which I, while lovely, this is probably something I would never use. So if you took my Confessions of a B-Side Scrapper class, you probably already know I am drawn to the more simple and easy to use little stripe on the back. I generally go for these kind of designs. Now, this is the A-Side of this paper from the same collection from October afternoon, but I really like these yellows and I think they pick up nicely the kind of more natural yellows and browns from the photographs. And since I'm doing a page, I guess, that I would call more, I wouldn't say vintage necessarily, but more of a family legacy type page or something, I kind of wanted to go with a little bit more, oh, vintagey colors, I guess, something like that. More natural colors. There, that's the word I'm looking for. The back side of this nice yellow floral is this gray check. I'm not sure if I will use this or use much of it, but I wanted several options. So this is the B side of that, of this yellow floral design. And then I really love this paper right here. It's the polka dot and it has some little text polka dots in here, also from the October Afternoon Farmhouse Collection. And here is the A side. Again, this is a lovely paper, but I would find a, I would have a hard time using this. This is the A, this is the B. If you were, took my B side scrapper class, you will know I was drawn to this one, of course. And even when, um, I have had a lot of questions about how I store my papers. When I get them, I store them with the design I'm going to use, or I think I will use, 
facing out so that when I flip through them, I see this first because I know already this is what I'm gonna be drawn to. Whichever side is predominant for me is the one I store facing out. Then I have this nice dark gray cardstock from American Crafts that I can kind of use as my base. I can use it for shadows for my die cut title, things like that. I also, I haven't pull, pulled it out here, but they do have a nice text background paper, um, the October Afternoon line does, that I may pull out to add certain elements to as I get going on my page. I also have these farmhouse stickers. Um, I'm not sure if I will use these. I didn't pull out the labels, but um, I might go ahead and go do that to use for my page. Now, I am going to die cut a title using my Silhouette Cameo and a design from Carrie Bradford, but to go with that, I am going to be using a couple of stamp sets from Technique Tuesday from their Studio AE um, line or their monthly kit, or monthly stamp set, I should say. So these are stamp sets designed by Allie Edwards, and I can't remember what month this is. This is the It's Okay stamp set, and this is this month's... No, this is December stamp set, sorry. And I think so. I'm con confused. I believe this is December stamp set, I'm almost positive. Anyway, I'm gonna use some of the pieces from this on my layout, and I'm also gonna use some of these because they have some nice words like mother and son. And I thought it would be nice to stamp some or create my own labels if I don't have any pre-made ones that these will fit on. And this is a paper tray ink label stamp set. And I can stamp my own labels and they're just die cuts that match these, die cut them out, and then stamp on these tags or labels to add to my layout. So I have this. I also have some of this tape here. I got this from Two Peas. I can't quite remember the name of it or the brand of it rather. I'll link it in the supplies. This is a nice white tape with little gray polka dots. I thought it matched my other supplies. And then I have these badges from Ormolu, which is a line that I love. I like all the colors in this. I like the fonts on this. I like everything about their line. I bought a bunch of it to do for my Project Life this year and also to use on my scrapbook page layouts and other projects. So I have these, and then I just, I did pull out just some random buttons. I'll probably use some of the more um, wood-looking ones and yellows and things for my page. So that's kind of what I have pulled out to get, uh, to get me started here, and I'm sure I will pull some other things out or remove some things as I get going. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I did to create the background of my page was I cut three four inch wide strips of pattern paper from some of the designs that I shared a little bit ago. So this kind of um, off-white one from Crate Paper and then a couple of yellow designs from the October Afternoon collection. So I'm going to cut those at four inches wide and then I'm going to cut about um, a half inch off the bottom of all of these. Then I'm going to lay them out here on my dark gray cardstock. That's going to be the base of my layout. I'm going to grab my pictures and make sure that I kind of like how this is working out. I did sketch it out like I showed earlier, but I always kind of like to rearrange and or arrange as I go along and make sure that I like it in actuality. So I'm just kind of playing with a couple things now. Now, one of the things that I like to do is lay out my stamps before I actually stamp them when I'm using clear stamps like this, it gives me a much better idea of how much room I have to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp some labels using this Paper Tray Ink Label Stamp Set. It will be linked in the supplies on my blog post. And I'm going to die cut using the coordinating little steel rule die here, also from Paper Tray Ink. I'm going to die cut that out of that same crepe paper paper, pardon me, um, the crepe paper um, pattern paper 
that I used for that middle strip on the background of my page just because it gives me a nice base that isn't like stark white or stark cream. I wanted a little bit of pattern there. And then I'm going to use some crushed curry ink from Stampin' Up to add that stamped border to my label. So there you can see that nice custom label. This is a great stamp set to have on hand if you like to use a lot of labels like I do. And maybe don't always have one in the color or size that you need. There are lots of sizes in this set and you can obviously stamp them and die cut them out of any kind of paper that you have on hand. I like stamp sets like this that really go a long ways and you can get a lot out of them. So you can see I'm adding some stamped words to them now as well. So now they're looking more like an actual label that you might peel off a sticker sheet. I did add a little bit of clay Studio Calico Mist to my printed journaling. And I also have die cut my title. This is a design from Carrie Bradford. And I'm using a little bit of white Mr. Huey Studio Calico Mist. I've gotten several questions wanting to know how I get those bigger blobs of mist ink. One of the ways is from spraying higher up. Bigger drops will fall on your project. Um, another way is to not press that the sprayer in all the way, kind of push it halfway and it will kind of drop out those bigger blobs. That is the easiest way I can think of to describe it. Um, that's usually how I do it. So once I have misted those, I'm just going to set those aside to dry and go ahead and put together the base of my page. You pro if you watched my series last year or any of my videos, you probably um, have heard me say that I don't like to put anything down or securely until I'm pretty sure that's where it's going to stay. I've also started using the more permanent dispenser here, ink, or adhesive dispenser, so I need to be pretty sure because it tears the paper when I go to pull it up. I am adhering my photos. Now the um, oldest photo was three and a half by five. Since that was pretty much the standard size print um, back then in the 70s, I believe. That's what size that print is, and I didn't have it enlarged when I went and had a duplicate made of it. So I went ahead and trimmed down my other photos, which were 4 by 6 um, I trimmed those down to 3 and a half by 5 I wasn't missing anything out of the photos, and it, it kind of tightened it up a little bit more, so it draws your attention more to the fact of the similarities between the photos. So I'm going to adhere part of my die cut that I cut from the gray and cream stripe that goes underneath part of my die cut title. I love that Carrie does a lot of these titles like this that you can cut from a couple of different colors of cardstock or patterned paper. I think it makes them much more interesting. And I'm a big, I love die cutting my titles. I do that on almost every one of my pages. So now I have my photos there, and I've also got my labels, so I'm going to kind of try to figure out where I want to put those. And I did go ahead and pull that up, and by some miracle it didn't tear my paper underneath, which was a bonus. And then I'm going to grab this word, Generations, from the Allie Edwards Family Is stamp set, and I am going to stamp that with some of the Stampin' Up! Crushed Curry ink. This is a really nice yellow. And I, I think this is a retired color. The Daffodil Delight would work as well. And then I'm going to take the Moments and Minutes stamp from the It's OK stamp set by Allie Edwards and stamp that with the basic gray Stampin' Up! ink right underneath it. So that just adds some nice detail to that middle strip it adds a little bit of color as well as the misting that I did and just add, makes it more interesting. I'm treating each of those four inch strips as its own sort of little piece of the of the layout. So I want to add embellishments to each of those to make them all interesting to stand on their own. But as a collective whole the layout looks nice and finished. 
I was having trouble deciding where I wanted to put this tape and then I realized it would look really cute on this middle strip because there it is a lot of journaling and just a slight bit of overlapping there with the title it really needed a little something more and I thought the polka dot gray tape here really added that little something now I've punched some photo corners using a Martha Stewart photo corner punch. I like making my own photo corners as well. That allows me to uh, make or punch them out of any color of pattern paper or cardstock that matches my page. Now I did stamp this right underneath my title because I wanted a little subtitle and I ended up not liking that. I felt it blended into the background too much. So I'm gonna stamp it on this Jelly Bean Soup sticker label sticker and then add that to my layout and that covers up my mistake and it also is much easier to read on that cream background rather than the pattern paper background now this is a tag that has also been die cut using my silhouette cameo this is also from Carrie Bradford and I cut it from some cream cardstock and I'm just going to stamp using this Write This Moment on Your Heart stamp from the It's Okay stamp set from Ali Edwards. Set that aside for a minute and I'm going to go ahead and punch some hearts using this little heart punch from Stampin' Up. And then I'll adhere those to the center of some of the florals on the right hand side of the page on that pattern paper. Again, treating that photo strip or that pattern paper strip rather as its own piece and dressing it up and making it more interesting. I'm going to also add another one of these little badges from Ormolu because I really like those. Some of my favorite of a new favorite new product that I have here in my studio. And I added a couple of brads to that jelly bean soup label sticker as well to dress it up. Now I added a little bit of the clay Mr. Huey to my tag. I addicted to the mists. I love that they add just a little something to die cut pieces or pattern paper backgrounds or journaling um, strips. I think it kind of makes it more interesting without overpowering it. And then I'm just, I didn't like the brad on this little pre-made embellishment from my mind's eye, so I took the brad out and cut part of it off and stapled it onto my tag. Again, adding elements that make it more interesting. I was going to move that tin pin or the badge rather and decided not to to put my brad from that same my mind's eye um, little brad and embellishment thing there. I'm going to put that on my tag instead. So I'm just deciding the best place to put it and then I'm going to I'm going to trim off part of my tag. I'm going to use this piercing tool from Tim Holtz to adhere it. So just deciding the best placement for it. Poke my little hole and then I'll add my brad. So the page is pretty much complete at this point. I am going to grab a little clip to finish off my tag. And there is my page. For more information on this layout plus the supplies used to create it, please visit my blog at www.nicolemagork.typepad.com on January 5th, 2012. And stay tuned every Wednesday for a new layout and video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.